Well, um, good morning. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> um, I'll just say a few words because this is not usually, this is not familiar. Um, my relationship with uh, Bukhara, Uzbekistan, has been a surprising um, and magical thread that has come up and down, stitching different parts of my life together. And in 1992, I um, was invited there to study, and uh, I, I ended up unexpectedly in a folkloric ensemble in Bukhara, Uzbekistan. <coughs> I went there to study the classical dance, which is, I'll sh well, I'll show you an example of that too. Um, but this, um, this is from Bukhara. In 1998, Bukhara celebrated their 2500th anniversary as a city. Mm. And one of my teachers who had immigrated <coughs> to the US was invited back there to be the, the billboard queen <laughs> of the festival. Um, um, there are many, many, many stories, as you can imagine. But um, just to say, this tradition, uh, this, is, this is typical Bukharan dress and um, the shape. Um, so some of the other styles in Uzbekistan are more form-fitting. And but this is Bukhara with this crown. You may know the word bakram, which is a stiffening mm -hmm. fabric you use in belts and stuff. Bukharan. B B Bukhara, from Bukhara. Mm -hmm. They have stiff, the stiff uh, crowns and the stiff, often cuffs and the pants and things. Um, and this, um, and I'm treating you today to this antique costume. Mm -hmm. My teachers don't approve of this because there's not enough sequins and gold embroidery. <laughs> <laughs> so I, uh, and I purchased this, um, this korta uh, in a little um, hole in the wall shop by um, cigarette lighter light because electricity was out under the tombs of Shahi Zinda in mm -hmm. Samarkand. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've been looking for one and here it is. Mm -hmm. um, the ikat is, the colors were traditionally handled by different families. So you had to get your warp tied, or tie dye, like tie dye. And then you went around to different places to get the colors. Mm -hmm. The blue it was usually handled by Jewish families. And if it has blue, it means it was the most expensive because that was the last color. Um, the crown is Bukharan. When I tried to find one in Samarkand, they said, oh, no, that's Bukhara. <laughs> that kind of thing there. <laughs> um, and the uh, uh, Peshkarta, which is a Museum quality needlepoint, uh, they really disapprove of because there's no gold embroidery in sequence. <laughs> so I'm treating you I'll to the antiques. Yeah. And this, this is probably about 100 years old. Oh, uh, wow. Wow. It's been patched. And the sleeves were new. I had to have the sleeves made. So, and this, the yeah. scarf, which is traditional to wear on the Pashana Band for folklore dance, is a Russian scarf. Oh. But this became in, in vogue at some point. Um, the style of dancing and singing, I'm, I'm not a singer, but this is carried usually by Jewish women because the, um, the Muslim women did not perform in public. Mm. So this tradition is called sozanda, which means musicians. If you're familiar with Turkish music, the word saz means musical instrument. Sozanda were usually um, troops of women, and the oldest one would be the holder of the music, the folklore, the poetry, the, and they would, go, they would perform at weddings and civic functions and circumcisions and birthdays and anniversaries. You would always have a troop of Sazanda ladies and they played only the drum, the daida, which I, I, I didn't bring an Uzbek one today, <clears throat> and it was only women. In, in the 1960s, one of my teachers decided, you know, we've got to modernize. <laughs> So she invited a young teenage rebab player, a little fiddle player, into her musical ensemble. And then since then, the musical ensembles have become integrated just since the 60s. Um, and um, my teacher, Tufahan, is uh, Jewish. Uh, she's written a book about her life with hundreds of, they're called, um, um, Muhammad's, their blessing poems that are recited over a cup of tea or 
whatever. Um, lots of songs she, she sang in several languages because they performed for everyone. Um, the Koreans, the Muslims, the, the Iranians, the Uzbeks. So Uzbekistan today is nationalized as Uzbek. But in southern Uzbekistan, most of the people are Tajik. They speak Tajik, which is a Persian language. And these songs are mostly in Tajik. Um, so this recording was made um, on one of the last days that I was there, and we did a whole big folkloric presentation, and they invited, she invited the whole ensemble so I could record the whole thing. So that's what this recording is from. And um, the, the, they're mostly wedding songs. The first song is about uh, today we're entering into the garden of love, and it's sort of a song that's used for bringing the bride in. And um, then it kind of goes on from there to various uh, folkloric songs, some of them silly, some of them serious. And the Sozanda, we don't really have a, um, a place in our culture. The closest is a, a Jewish wedding singer. The wedding singer kind of <coughs> runs the energy. If you've ever seen that silly movie of the wedding singer, um, the kind cantor? of takes, it takes a pardon? Are they called the cantor? Uh, no, the that's in the service. service. The wedding singer comes to the wedding, kind of handles the energy of the wedding, knows what songs it's to sing. It's a specialized guy. Are people, <laughs> yeah, are people dancing? Are they, too, you know, is, is, is the family happy? What do we need to do? Do we need to get the kids involved? You know, like that. And the Susan Na does that, and she has all these poems and blessing poems, and people come up to her and okay. bring, bring their children to get blessed. Um, women who want to, um, women who are praying to get pregnant will come to a Sozanda after she's danced and they'll put their hands on her, on her belt. Sometimes there's another kind of costume where she'll wear this uh, silver belt with a big buckle and they'll come. It's a sort of shamanic kind of tradition. Mm -hmm. So um, anyway, if you have any other questions, I'm happy to answer. There are hundreds of stories and it's been quite an adventure. Can you tell us the name of your teacher in the book again? Uh, her name was Tofahan Pinkasova. And um, the sh very short version, uh, I, uh, I was invited over there by the mayor of Bukhara, and he set me up with a woman, it was a Tajik woman, uh, who had this big folklore ensemble. And I had never seen the folklore dance. I'd only seen classical dance, and that's why I was going to Uzbekistan. To so I ended up in this ensemble. Um, dancing several times a day for a month. I lived, I, and I was doing Middle Eastern dance. I didn't know any Uzbek dance. So I was practically living in my costume. Well, this, this woman, there was another dancer whose name kept coming up. And every time her name would come up, my, the teacher I was staying with said, oh, she's old, she's fat, she's blind. They don't have any good dancers, and they have lousy costumes. And, well, um, this went on, and I, I never, I didn't really know who this woman was. I met her by accident one day, briefly. Two or three years later, I, I was living in New Mexico, and a friend from Boulder called me, and she said, there's this Uzbek family coming here, and I think they're musicians, and I'm having a party for them, and you're the only person I know who knows anything about this. Will you please come up here and meet them? So. Um, uh, we packed the car and drove up to Boulder, and it turned out to be the one I was not allowed to meet was my teacher's teacher. Oh. She was like the one. She was like the one who went back to Bukhara to be the billboard, you know, of, of the 2500 year anniversary. She was an extraordinary woman and singer, and her whole family emigrated to Denver, Colorado. Oh. And so she and I got to be friends, and we produced a lot of concerts together, and I danced with them in New York and at the Smithsonian, and uh, it was quite a, quite a story. Both of them have since passed away, mm -hmm. and that teacher, the, the Jewish Sosanda, she has written a book about her life, and then her daughter rewrote it and trans had it translated into English and then donated a lot of her things to a museum in California, a Jewish museum in California. Mm -hmm. So in America, this is considered the young generation of Bukharans in America think of this as Jewish dancing. Mm -hmm. 
it's not, it's, it's, it's Central Asian dance from Bukhara. And it carries a, a number of threads of culture. And um, it, it's as old as women who are playing, playing drum. So with all that, I... Mm -hmm. I Number one. Mm -hmm.
treat. Uh, thank you. A little taste. Oh, wonderful. Oh, thank you. Wow. <laughs> and then, honey, question. I have one more dance, but I'm going to need to change. Uh, Did people ever speak about the particular gestures? Like um, this? Gosh, these are old. They turn up in Middle Eastern dance, too, and people still argue over what they mean. Uh -huh. um, it's the wrist and the shoulders. Yeah. Um, there are a lot of theories about what they mean. And in, in, um, in like, East. Eastern Gypsy dance, and you'll see this um, sometimes. Oh, thank you. Um, sometimes they say, "Oh, it's uh, from getting hit," <laughs> or sometimes it's uh, just because the energy of the dance brings you to that. You know, like in in um, in um, Turkish Gypsy dancing. They'll hit their hips, yeah. they hit their chest, or something. Um, so it's like an energy. Uh, yeah, it's kind of like the energy. It's that's like, you know, like that. And I don't know if this is maybe a gesture from marketplace yeah. stuff oh. that might come up, you know. Price how, much, how, how much, you know. Or, yeah, it's like, how much do you want for it? How much are you going to give for my daughter? <laughs> yeah, we like this, this much. <laughs> I don't know. These are all these are all series. <coughs> um, I'll give you a donkey less. <laughs> <laughs> but some of these gestures are so, um, you know, when I dance for children, they just can't help but copy. It's that kind of vicarious yeah. feeling, and um, that was one of the things I learned the most from Uzbek dance is this jo the joy, the joy of engaging. Uh, you know, um, in Western dance, modern dance, there's a fourth wall, the audience isn't there, you're doing your thing, <laughs> you know? And ballet is, um, is like you're dancing over the audience in this high, high, sort of um, dramatic way. This is, is really engaged, and because it's folkloric, um, it's about keeping the guests happy and keeping everything going and I I was at a, a wedding one evening the last week I was there that was trellises of roses it was a full moon the air was so still that the roses were falling apart down onto the guests on the, at the table oh. under the trellises <laughs> and we danced for eight hours um, oh. and it was not about artistic expression oh. <laughs> it was not about performing and whenever anybody needed rest my teacher was back there pretty much like, <laughs> you know, keep on dancing. <laughs> and so we just danced. And we danced with the guests and without the guests. And we, you know, we just went on and on and on through the night. The, the, the idea, and, I, and that was, that was, I had several experiences of what it's like to be a dancing girl. <laughs> um, hard life? But yeah, yeah, it's a hard true. life. Yeah. Is, there, is there a name for that dance that you did? For this? For the dance that you just did? Um, well, nothing. It's not a choreography. It's okay. kind of an improvisation. Yeah. And the music, you can tell I wasn't really synced up musically all the time. Um, it's Bukharan folklore. Yeah. 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 I thought you were good for that. I thought you introduced it as something when you said the, the first was going to be such and such or something. I thought you had a name for the first uh, feature. Oh, the first one, the song, is a, is a traditional wedding, oh, okay. sort of wedding That's procession okay. song, yeah. No. But they'll have whole medleys of songs that they mix around depending on the occasion. Mm -hmm. I'm curious about your experience because the vocation of feeling, I mean, it's just like you turned on a laser faucet of feelings, you know, <laughs> like, right? Yeah. You know, really, the, the emotionality filled the room. And, and mm -hmm. was that yep. your experience too? With um, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I love doing it. <laughs> and I'm loving doing it for you all. And that's, you yeah, know. Yeah, wow. Um, yeah. But that's, that's what the dance is for. And even the, classi the, what, the classical piece I'm going to show you is not that way because it's a serious piece and I'll talk about that. It's a, it's a more esoteric kind of do you piece. Have a, do you but have a family genetic uh, connection to that part of the world? Not that I know of. It, it just, <laughs> was just a feeling that led you into that? Time. Well, I was already involved in all these kind of studies, you know, so I'd sort of heard about Bukhara. And I was also doing Middle Eastern dance 
I grew up in ballet. I don't have a ballet body. I found Eastern dances, and that gave me a dance career. But belly dancing wasn't giving me enough depth or enough technique or enough, um, uh, you know, enough. So I kept looking around for something else, and I couldn't figure it out. <clears throat> One day I was looking through a dance magazine, and there was a little photograph of dancers with these kind of crowns on it, a little bit different. And this article about this back dance, and I was just like a laser. <laughs> it's like, that's it, that's it, that's it. And I'd never heard of any of it before. And I was living in Santa Fe, and I thought, well, so now what am I going to do? You know, I don't even know. <laughs> so that summer, I was going to a, a Middle Eastern dance camp in Mendocino in California. The, the woman who wrote the article was one of the teachers on the staff that summer. And she was teaching some Uzbek dance. So I spent five days learning some little choreography and came back to Santa Fe and was like, okay, well now what? How do I pursue this? And, um, and in that winter, I was invited to dance for some fundraising event, some dinner. They were going to have an ethnic fashion show and a dinner, and, and there was a blizzard, and I was the only dancer who could get there. <laughs> the other dancers had called and said, we can't come, it's a blizzard. So the musicians called and said, can you come and dance? You know, so I came. It was a fundraiser for a Santa Fe Bukhara Sister City organization. Oh, I had no idea that Santa Fe was a sister city of Bukhara. <laughs> the blizzard got me there, you know. Yeah, so and the story goes on and wow. on and wow. on. I won't belabor all the various stories except to say that I lived in New Mexico for forty years. And then I came to take care of my mother here in Tennessee, in Cookville, which is 80 miles east of here. I was, please, God, please don't make me live in Cookville, Tennessee. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I got my mom out of the nursing home and took care of her for three years. And then she died, and I was going to leave. And then I did not have the means to leave. All my work in New Mexico was given to other people. And I'm like, I don't know what to do. So one day I saw a house in Cookville that was like, that looks like my house. And I looked and looked and, and I looked around. I went for a week going and looking in all the windows. It was like, no, 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 I'm not staying here. I don't, I don't even have the money to buy a house, you know? So I kept looking and looking and finally I called the real estate person who was listed on the house and, and she said, oh honey, I'm not in Cookville this week, but my partner can show you the house and she was in New Mexico. <laughs> having, having dinner with some friends of my mother's that I had no living there. So I called her, I called her um, partner, and the next morning I'm driving to this house that I'd completely fallen in love with, praying for a sign. Um, and I'm more of a bhakti person than a head person, so I'm praying for a sign. I walk in, the house is even more perfect. And I'm thinking, but I'm not staying in Cookville. And I, I don't even have the money to buy a house. How am I, you know? So we went through the whole house. We're just about to leave, and on the back porch, there's a sun porch. We lock the door. We're turning around to go out the front, and I look up over the breakfast room door is a map of Uzbekistan. <laughs> <laughs> I've just been living there and teaching dance and doing so. Anyway, that's the short story. And there were many, many other magical connections where Bukhara just keeps popping up, and I, I don't know what the purpose is, but here we are. So I'm, I'm thrilled to be able to share wow. to share a little bit of this with you. Yeah. Thank you. So let me go make a very fast change, and then I'm going to show you a, a, a classical choreography. Can I just get, can I get a front? Yeah. <laughs> the new passport as well. Photo off, photo off. Quick, there you go. Yeah. How much is it, the $100? And before you run off, can I think I will go quick speak at your uh, uh, 
tail. <laughs> you get your own tail, man. <laughs> I didn't say it that way. I'll bring it into it too, so you can look at it later. Can I take a Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. All right, thank you.